All right, so you can see getting started here that I have a piece of vinyl in place already that's gonna be big enough to cover the entire roof, uh, left and right, forward and back. Um, a couple things to note here is that when I cut this out, you can see that I've kind of custom shaped this a little bit where I've trimmed out the excess width in between the railings and also left out some excess on the front and the back side of the railings so that it can wrap over the little parts of the roof that are exposed behind and in front of the railings but next to the drip sill itself. Also, I did cut out an antenna hole, which I'll talk to you about here in a minute after explaining this piece. Uh, and I have a magnet line uh, set up as well. And then just to the left of the magnet line in the screen, so towards the back, I did make a back slit cut there. So basically I cut the backing paper behind that line. So I essentially divided the uh, piece of vinyl that's going the length of the roof in half so I could tackle the back half of the roof first and then the front half of the roof after that. And so let me explain real quick before we get going how to how I cut out and set up the antenna cut out there that you see uh, on the top of the roof. Okay so real quick before we get started I'm going to show you how I'm going to be able to wrap around the antenna. You can see here's my piece cut out. Um, I also trimmed off the side so it's not quite as wide because the roof is only about 48 inches wide at, at the front end, 40 inches wide at the back. So I trimmed down this 60 inch wide panel uh, by a foot. And I also measured about where the shark fin antenna is from the very back with a little bit of excess going forward. And then from here, you can see that I've kind of drawn out the antenna. Now this mark here and this mark here is the actual uh, total length of the antenna so you can see I drew a cutout that's going to be slightly smaller by about half an inch each um, and then I know the total width of my antenna and I have center marks here center dots um, the total width at the very base is two and a half inches so I made this an inch and a half wide now that's not going to be fully big enough to get it all the way around the antenna but it'll be big enough to drop it around to get it started and I can work my way down from there so what I'll do here next is I'll just cut this out and then as I peel back my vinyl, I'll drop this particular piece right over the antenna and that kind of gets me set up in place. All right, with that out of the way, go ahead and get your vinyl in place as you see I have on the video. And then I like to start with the back half as I said before. And so I fold it over and you can see where I made that back slit that I had scrapped earlier. Start to pull my paper that way and pull it kind of low and across the back of the uh, roof itself. And that helps minimize um, some of the lifting and uh, static uh, issues that may happen. Once you've got the backing paper peeled all the way out, go ahead and glass out the vinyl as best you can as you see me doing here on the back side and then on both sides. And once you have that process done, just get as, as best as you can. Uh, it's time to start to encapsulate the antenna. And when you encapsulate the antenna, you're essentially just trying to create a big bubble around the antenna itself, as you can see me attempting to do here. I do have a separate video uh, on showing how to encapsulate a wrapper roof specifically with a shark fin antenna on. And so I'm doing the same process as in this video here. So anyway, back to this, uh, you can see that I'm just trying to make a big bubble around the antenna. If you need to use a little bit of heat to help shrink and smooth out the vinyl as necessary so that it will become more pliable and easy to use uh, as far as trying to make that bubble. Do try to stay as far away from the actual thing that you're trying to encapsulate, in this case the antenna. Uh, the further away you can do it, the easier it is to uh, encapsulate and get the vinyl down and around the object that you're trying to encapsulate. And so you can see that I use a little bit of heat and then um, what I did there was use my finger to kind of press straight down. Uh, notice I'm really just kind of tapping the vinyl down before making any sliding or squeegeeing movements. And that's just to try to create the, the gap or the side of each of the bubble before smoothing it out. And you can see here that I've almost encapsulated the entire antenna except for that top right portion, which you saw I heated there. And from there, you know, that what that does is help shrinks the vinyl a little bit, also makes it softer. And then I used my squeegee in that case to just kind of tap down the vinyl and seal off the bubble itself, the big encapsulated bubble around the antenna. And then now that antenna itself is fully encapsulated. And what I'm doing here is just making uh, all the edges as round and smooth, or in this case, a big oval around the antenna to um, try to make everything even. 
Uh, once you do that, you basically start to work the vinyl in and towards the antenna itself, and you can use a combination of heat, and you can see here I'm actually doing some relief cuts to allow the vinyl to drop down. And so basically, I warm out the vinyl a little bit, squeegee in. If I see I get a lot of tension, I can make some more relief cuts, cut, um, take that vinyl away to allow the vinyl to slide down the antenna more, heat it a little bit if you need to, and then work the vinyl towards the antenna as you see me doing in the video. And you just work that so you get all the way to the base. As you can see, I'm practically at the base on the side of the antenna that we're looking at here. And then once you've got that all done, this is what it will look like. You can see that I have the vinyl tucked in against the base real nice and tightly there. And so once you've done that, it's time to start finishing applying the rest of the roof. This should be fairly easy as now the rest of the roof is fairly flat in this case. So basically I'm just taking my uh, squeegee and applying the vinyl, lifting up a little bit if needed to, and I'm just basically getting and working the vinyl towards the inner sides of the rail. Uh, once I hit that rail there, you can see towards the back, um, it's kind of pushed up against where it uh, allows itself to drop down. So I just made a relief cut to get it closer to the rounded part, but shy of it, and made a cut up and down um, and out, as you'll see me do here, uh, to allow the vinyl to go fall down behind the railing itself so that you can then apply it a little bit later. And then it's trimming off the excess and then continuing to apply the rest of that back vinyl. I've pr practically got that all done now, so it's going to time to apply the front half of the vinyl. You can see I'm again just peeling the backing paper just since I'm doing a solo, slided that uh, backing liner straight out across the roof, and then now just again glassing the vinyl as best I can. Uh, you may have to lift it up a couple times as you see me doing here. And uh, again, if you glass it out, it makes it a little bit easier and faster for the squeegeeing process. You may have to lift up a little bit as you can see me doing here. I was doing this in a very hot garage, probably about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So the vinyl's adhesive, which in this case Vivid, is heat activated. So it was very, very sticky. So the vinyl was just grabbing on everything. And so again, working my way uh, in towards the inner rail. Uh, as you see me doing there and tucking it uh, the vinyl against the inner rail and once i get close to the front side there i'll kind of do all i will do the same thing as it in the back once i get to the front of the railing make that relief cut so that the vinyl will drop down over the part of the roof that goes over the side of the railing uh, in front of the railing but past it on the side towards the drip sill and then doing the same thing on the other side of the front as well um, that's all set up now and so here I'm going to my car has a moonroof and I have that open ahead of time as you slid me here and so I'm basically I'm just heating all that vinyl and you can see that the vinyl is shrinking and essentially glassing itself out and now I'm gonna take my wrap glove and my finger and tighten up the edges and roll it down just a hair um, and smooth all that line out because when I cut you want nice smooth lines so that when you do trim out the vinyl I'm just basically doing a flush cut meaning the side of my blade is up against the side of the inner part of the moonroof uh, to act as my cutting guide and just carefully and slowly tracing around uh, that way I don't cut the paint of my car uh, and I make a nice smooth clean cut. You see just cut that right out and once I'm done with that just taking my wrap glove and some heat and smoothing down the edge that I cut. Uh, in this case I elected not to tuck in because you'll never see that so I didn't do that. Next part is to uh, get ready to cut the vinyl or set up the vinyl for between the end of the roof and the glass and I just bridged it over the, at the gap of the roof and the windshield as you saw me do there, heated it a little bit to smooth it out, smooth it out, and then trimmed along the glass side of the windshield there towards each of the sides, trimmed out the excess vinyl as you saw me doing there, pull off the, uh, the front part there, that's excess now. And on the inside of the rail, all I did was trim it out, and I used, and you'll see me coming around here, I used my squeegee uh, and my knife just carefully and lightly trimmed out, and I used the squeegee to help uh, add a little bit of um, gap or excess vinyl across the top uh, to just huck in a little bit later as you'll see here. And then on the back side between the spoiler area and the back of the roof, bridged across, heated and smoothed it out, and then trimmed on the spoiler side doing a flush cut there, basically what's known as a solid cut to allow some vinyl to drop down behind. And you can see that I have my squeegee, that I have my blade on top of the squeegee, and that gives me just like the width of a squeegee gap of vinyl to be able to tuck in. In this case, my vinyl that I'm using had a plastic protective cap. See me peeling it off, and then before I tucked in my vinyl, um, which is why I used a squeegee to give a little bit of excess vinyl for the cut, um, you could tuck it under the rubber seal in this case that my roof railing has, and I'm just basically using two micro squeegees, one to lead and lift up the rubber seal a bit, and the second one following behind to tuck in the vinyl. Uh, and then 
towards the windshield there's a rubber seal on practically every windshield and you can use your micro squeegee to push the vinyl forward not the vinyl the uh, rubber forward a little bit and then be able to tuck in the vinyl behind it as you saw me doing there what i'm doing right here in the front corner and you do this for every corner there is just kind of use your micro squeegees to work that down and make nice and smoothly around the rounded corner and then i trimmed off a little bit of excess where the vinyl hits and meets the drip sill on the other side of the railing, doing the same thing, just taking that excess vinyl that I left because I used my squeegee to add a, add a little bit of um, vinyl to cut and tucked it in. And then same thing here with my uh, antenna. You can see my blade on top of the hard edge of my squeegee, and that gives just a like a maybe a sixteenth worth of extra vinyl up along the base, which then I can tuck under and in uh, underneath the uh, antenna itself. If you're comfortable enough, you can do it freehand like I did on that side there. Um, I just left a hair bit of vinyl and then you can actually in a lot of cases the antenna case the shark fin is a little bit loose you can kind of push it up a little bit and tuck that vinyl in as I did there on the back corner all I'm doing is tucking in the rest of that vinyl that was there and on the back side I just tucked all that down to make sure everything's nice and smooth and guys that's it so this is the final product again this is Vivid's ultra gloss khaki green vinyl uh, it's a really nice looking vinyl very smooth finish very kind of a creamy smooth look to it that's the best way i can describe it people think it's paint that i've actually repainted my car uh, but it's actually just vinyl with a really really nice smooth finish first time i'm trying it so we'll see how it holds up over the course of time if you thought this video was helpful guys be sure to hit that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe got more videos on the way thanks again for watching guys have a great day